Ever noticed how compounding interest works? If you don't have a lot of time, it's not beneficial. It accelerates slowly. But if you do have time on your side, when you get to that 30th or so year, compounding happens exponentially. Well, we're in that 30th year and moving forward when it comes to how fast AI is affecting everything we do. It has advanced so rapidly and is moving so fast that using it daily has become the norm now. And I, like you, am using it daily. In this video, I'm gonna give an update on how I'm using AI, what tools I'm using, workflows, and why I think we need to rethink how we're currently handling it. And let's start with that last point before we get to all the fun stuff. So I had a conversation with the guy the other day, and he had somewhat of a different perspective than what you're seeing out there and it truly inspired me. Currently, most developers are hiding their use of LLMs. Not the fact that they're using them sometimes, but they downplay their usage like, yeah, I just use it for menial tasks or to double check a few things, that's it. But the truth is, the majority of software developers now are using it. But here's where I've been inspired a bit. I think we should, of course, not hide our usage of it, as if it makes us look incompetent or needing some sort of help, but instead reverse course and be wide open about our usage of it. So the conversation I had the other day was different in that this person was 100% not aware that there are stereotypes out there of devs who are using AI. He's not only wide open about using it, but his usage of it is so well done that he's challenging others around him by getting things done. While people are spinning wheels and following the traditional paths that they learned in college or over the years in whatever industry they're in, he's using LLMs to not only get things done faster, but present more data and results around the problems others are trying to solve before they even have a plan for how to solve them. And he's like, yeah, so I use Claude to create a script to get such and such data. I combined it all and then use Claude to identify different themes that we're trying to sell. And here's the report. Oh, and I did that over lunch. So my point here is that if you're a competent developer as this guy is, he's not an indie hacker asking everyone what they're shipping or a vibe coder who lets AI do its thing as a form of therapy. If you are a competent developer or whatever you do in tech and you have used LLMs enough to know their limits and can bring out the best in them, then you should boldly carry your AI tooling with you to your workplace, your meetings, your job interviews. And I think we're getting to this point where at your next job interview, you can say something like, I am a competent developer with X years of experience and am well versed in using Claude code or cursor or whatever flavor LLM to get work done efficiently. In fact, there's an article I read the other day on Reddit where a person attended the second round of their Google product management interview and was blindsided by the fact that it was actually going to be a vibe coding interview. They wanted to see how this person worked with LLMs. Did they have control? Do they have good experience and command of an LLM in such a scenario? Does it make them more productive or slow them down? Do they actually know what it's writing so as to help it troubleshoot and produce accurate results? Would you be ready for that? And by the way, this was for a product manager role. Imagine if you were using LLMs all secretly trying to maintain your persona as an elite coder and then you get to the interview and they want to see how you work with LLMs. My advice? Get good at using them, make them work for you, and boldly let people know you use them. Be open about it, and most importantly, let your good work speak for itself. Now let me show you one of a myriad of examples of how a tool like Claude Code can drastically speed up your work. But before I do that and then move on to the tooling and workflow, I wanna briefly highlight an app that's been helping me think more clearly and solve problems better, especially as AI becomes a bigger part of our day-to-day -day work. Here's a quick word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform that helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data, and even AI. I've been using Brilliant myself and what sets it apart is how hands-on everything is. You're not just watching lectures, you're solving real problems as you go. It's active learning and it works. I found that I understand things better and I actually remember them. Today I started their course on how AI works. It breaks down big ideas like prediction, probability, neural networks, and language analysis analysis through interactive challenges that make you think. You're not just reading about these concepts, you're engaging with them step by step, which makes the learning feel practical and real. Whether you're brushing up on foundational math or diving into the latest in computer science, every course is crafted by experts from places like MIT and Google, so you're getting both depth and clarity. Another thing I really like is how easy it is to build a daily habit. I can jump in for just a few minutes on my phone or laptop each day, and I'm always making progress. So if you're someone who loves learning or just just wants to sharpen your thinking, I can't recommend Brilliant enough. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash travismedia or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. 
So again, here is one of many examples out there of how a tool like Claude Code can easily speed up your workflow. So I have this simple app that sends data to a database, and I added this file, send to DB, and I pushed it up to GitHub in a branch and submitted a pull request. Another dev reviews it and leaves a few comments on my code. Usually you get this notification in an email. I just have a mock example here but you first see the file name. You can see the code block that they highlighted and you can see this comment that they left. These are three prime pieces of data for you to dump into an LLM. And something like Claude Code will just find that file, get the context and in seconds suggest the solution. I know the solution, but it's more efficient for me to approve or tweak the solution than to implement the solution from scratch. So I copy this whole thing, open up Claude Code, set it to plan, paste it in and go make coffee. The plan is made, I can run it, and since it's in sync with my IDE, I can look at exactly what it's implementing. In something this simple, it can nail in the first try. Done. Now I know this is a simple example, code bases are complex and situations are harder, but for many situations that are on the easier or even more creative side, an LLM can make you even more of an asset. So stop making excuses that they hallucinate too much, that they slow you down and all that. It's a user problem, a prompt problem. Prompt engineer is a dumb term, but prompting is everything. Okay, enough of that, let's talk about tooling. And by the way, what are you using? Leave a comment below so that we can discuss it. So when it comes to LLMs, I've tried them all and I can say that I now use 99% of the time, almost exclusively, Claude code. I did not think I would like an LLM in the terminal, but it just works so well. And I'm not gonna get into all the shortcuts and all of that because it will make this the 500th video to date on that topic. But a few things to note. Plan mode should be the starting point for most of your tasks. Use slash IDE to sync your IDE. Compact or start a new session when the context gets below 25%. And if you don't have a claw.md file or it's become bulky and out of hand, use the slash init command to create a central knowledge base for your project or to recreate that central knowledge base for your project. And if you want some more tips, check out the blog post I created not too long ago. I'll put a link below to it. But I just found myself gravitating again and again to Claude Code over everything else. It was a very natural transition that happened. In addition, I found this tool called Hammerspoon, which allows you to do some cool automation on Macs. And I created this shortcut that when I hit shift twice, it opens up my terminal at like 30% to the right on top of everything so that I can quickly and easily use Claude Code. And yes, I largely use it in my IDE, which I'll talk about in a second. But what's helpful is I also have this alias where I can just type CPP and whatever I want to ask Claude and I can access the LLM way quicker than finding the tab in my browser. If I hit shift again, my terminal minimizes. So this is my shortcut to my Claude terminal and it's a double click away. And I'll leave a link to a gist to the Hammerspoon script and the CPP alias and all of that below. As for my IDE, I use cursor. Now I don't use the chat window really for anything because again, I'm using Claude code down in the terminal and it plays well with cursor because it's a VS code fork. So again, run slash IDE in the Claude code prompt to connect it to your IDE and have them work together. And maybe I'll find some way to use the LLM and cursor more often in the future, but right now I just haven't needed it. However, I do like the cursor tab sometimes, the autocomplete. Like I forgot some semicolons and I add one and I just hit tab over and over and it just adds them one by one for me throughout the document. It's great. But I don't pay for cursor yet and I often max that autocomplete tab out and it gets disabled, but I find it helpful in certain scenarios and I do use the LLM now and again in, but way, way less than Claude Code. And I see today that Amazon just introduced their new IDE, Kiro. I may check that out soon, but do note that overall, they all mostly do the same things. They use the same models, but they just have a different approach as to how they think the user is gonna best use it. So ultimately, you'll have to try these out. Most of them have a free tier, Give it a shot. Now a brief word on terminals. I used to be a huge fan of the warp terminal and I still am, I think it's great. But there's a point where you have this kind of technology overload where there are just too many capabilities at your fingertips. So recently, in an effort to minimize some of this overload, I started using the ghosty terminal. And I absolutely love it. Why? I don't know. I've been an iTerm user forever, but Ghosty feels so lightweight, so fast. And when I tried it, I just again naturally continued to use it. So Claude Code is the brain and it's connected to my IDE. And there's already so much going on in just that piece where a simple lightweight terminal just keeps me calm and focused and gives me a nice balance. 
And then occasionally, if I max out Claude Code because I'm just on the $20 plan, I will use the Gemini CLI, but I just find it not only to be far inferior, but it can be quite snarky. It talks back. It refuses to do stuff. And while I kind of like that, I don't. But actually, if you work with it because it's fast and you can go back and forth on a lot of things, I think it softens up and almost respects the work you're putting in. But overall, it sucks at most things. ChatGPT, I use the free version as well because I use it more to get a second opinion when I need it. So in conclusion, if you find benefit in an LLM, resolve to be open about it and let your good work speak for itself. I think anything less and you're hindering the way everything is headed and you're selling yourself short. If I lose my job one day, you can bet I'm bringing my LLM to the interview. It's my assistant and if you want me to do work for you, I'm bringing it along. I think you'll find in the end that you're glad I did. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.